Righto, tally ho there champs and welcome to the show. Now last night, Apple's developer conference, we had a lot of announcements in terms of computers. I'll get through all, all those announcements. I'm mainly interested in a MacBook Pro to have refreshed that. <coughs> Apologise for my voice, I'm very sick and my voice will break up, sorry. And I've got a biryani inside and hopefully that will burn the back of my throat. Now, first of all, new iPad Pro, who cares? I mean, if you hate yourself, get an iPad Pro as your main computer. I really couldn't care less about that. External GPUs, that's cool. With an RX 580 you can have, that's going to come out too. They've got Metal 2 in the new Sierra. We know Macs suck at 3D, hopefully this will make them a bit better. New iMacs. So we're talking better displays, you know, 500 nits of brightness, 10-bit dithering, which means fake 10-bit. Going to have Kaby Lake processors, fantastic. Iris graphics you can have. Of course, they come in 21 and 27 inches, up to 64 gigabytes on the 5K 27 inch there. And you can also get an 8 gigabyte RX 580. Thunderbolt 3 support, of course. SD card slot. I thought they hated SD card slot. And you can also get a Fusion Drive as standard or a 2 gigabyte SSD for storage. So there's nothing really to complain about here except they are expensive and there are better value all-in-ones and some of them with touch displays. And Now they also announced the iMac Pro. So this is 27-inch 5K display, space grey, whatever. Most powerful Mac ever, up to 18 cores. It comes with an 8-core standard, 120 gigabyte ECC memory. That's the most memory you can have, and it also comes with an up to 16 gigabyte Vega. So this thing is very powerful. It's going to be, obviously, AMD's top-of-the-line graphics card. So it will be very powerful. Up to 4 terabytes SSDs there, and 4 Thunderbolt 3s, 10 gigabit Ethernet, and, of course, an SD card slot. Now, all of that looks fantastic in terms of specs and that. Me, personally, I would not want an all-in-one workstation sort of thing, and we're talking Xeons here, so up to 18 core Xeons. So basically, this is Mac's workstation. I know they're going to release a new Mac Pro in the future, but this is their best workstation solution now. And the RAM looks like it's upgradable. I can see four slots there, but the storage won't be. So it sort of defeats the purpose of having this sort of elegant all-in-one solution. I would not want a workstation in an all-in-one solution like that. It's very expensive to like $5,000 starting point with for an 8-core, and you won't be getting a 16 gigabyte Vega for that. There will be a cheaper one. And you could obviously spec up a PC that would beat their 499 8 core easily for a lot cheaper. Well, I'm not a lot cheaper, but it definitely will be cheaper and more powerful. There's a couple of problems I have with this. One, the all in one workstation doesn't work for me. Two, the storage is not upgradable. So there's no M.2 slot, so you're stuck with whatever storage is in there. And yes, you can connect things externally, but what's the point of having an all in one? The elegant solution when you've got to now plug a Thunderbolt 3 external SSD solution or something like that and then another monitor it just starts to look like an octopus again. Question there is what's the point of being an all-in-one when you're going to just have to add a lot of things onto it anyway and what happens you know in a few years time when that main storage stuff's up you have to chuck the computer away I mean you can't just replace the M.2 SSD and also because it's using Xeons one of the main things people love about Macs is Final Cut Pro, it renders fast, whatever, but it uses Quick Sync to render fast. That's why 5K IMAX, current 5K IMAX, render faster than Mac Pros, even though Mac Pros are more powerful. And that's because IMAX use consumer CPUs, which have Quick Sync. Now, this doesn't have Quick Sync, so unless they're doing some better metal acceleration using the Vega and OpenCL, I would not be surprised if the iMac could outrender this 8 core in Final Cut Pro just because it uses QuickSync. So yeah, there are great stuff here. 10 gigabit Ethernet, that's fantastic. Um, so that's just my two little minor issues with this. And then of course, the one I'm interested in the most is the MacBook Pro refresh. And yeah, there's minor upgrades to the MacBook and the MacBook Air, just a small little bump. But with the MacBook Pro, this is really what the MacBook Pro should have been. They shouldn't have been so greedy trying to rush things out for Christmas. They should have waited until they could have fit a Cabby Lake into the MacBook Pros and then released it. I mean, Dell done that. They could have rushed out a computer before Christmas, but they waited till after Christmas to get the Cabby Lake, and that was a good decision by Dell. Now, there's nothing really changes here. Still, the XPS 15 is a better computer, I can just tell you now, because all that's happened here with the MacBook Pros is 
They put a Kaby Lake processor in them and RX 560 graphics. So RX 560 is basically the same as the 460. It's just renamed. There is a slight increase in performance, but it's not worth talking about. So nothing changes there. Kaby Lake will give them a little bit of boost in the battery department for the MacBook Pros, but I don't think it's going to solve their throttling issues. And we know the 15-inch MacBook Pros, they get very hot. They throttle. So even if you get the top of the line CPU, it's most likely going to throttle and perform at a lower clock speed anyway so there's no point in even getting the top of the line higher speed Kaby Lake CPU with these MacBook Pros now this addresses no issues like I get questions every day I must have sold so many computers and people wanted to switch to Windows so many people every day asking me oh which PC should I use I'm not happy with the new MacBook and the reasons they're not happy is I'd say the two main reasons are the ports so they've pegged themselves into a corner because they're not going to revise the motherboard within six months. So they have to use the motherboard they've got. So they can't change the ports and it's lack of 32 gigs RAM. They can't really change the RAM. They can't really change the layout of the computer either because of the motherboard. And So I'd really like to see how they're handling the Intel HD graphics because, um, yeah, as you probably know, the Intel HD graphics, the drivers and that. And there's been a lot of problems with the previous macbook pro in terms of graphics and glitching and stuff like that um these cable lakes aren't going to help any in that regard so really nothing changes the xps 15 is still the better buy and this thing here is going to cost you like a thousand dollars more us i mean in australia it's going to cost you like merely fifteen hundred dollars more for the same spec computer except with the xps 15 you will have 32 gigs and also you have the Zeus Zenbook Pro, which, which will have a GTX 1050 Ti in it. So this refresh, nothing really changes. It's still a ripoff. You can get much better computers, more powerful computers in terms of graphics, display, upgradability, RAM, like 32 gigs. So there are still better performing options out there compared to this MacBook Pro and they are a lot cheaper too. So nothing really changes. You're better off still buying an XPS 15 than this. And really these 15 inch MacBook Pros, they don't even sell that well. It's their lower end Macs that sell a lot. And there is a new price for the 13 inch non-touch, which I recommend is the best Mac. If you want to go Mac, the best Mac for me is the 13 inch non-touch. The new MacBook Pro refresh is very, very minor, very disappointing. And I have actually ordered one, so I will have one in soon for testing. But one thing that is good is you get the 4GB RX 560 as standard now, where it used to be an option. But still, the price of it, oh my god, it's insane. So... I'll be testing it out, see how it goes compared to the XPS 15. Make sure you subscribe if you want to see that and hit that like button. Got lots more tech content coming soon, guys. And until next time, guys, tally ho.